Hello everyone and welcome to this invited talk on rate splitting and rate splitting multiple access for 6G as part of the IEEE PMRC 2020 workshop on rate splitting and robust interference management for beyond 5G. My name is Bruno Clerks. I'm a professor of wireless communication signal processing at Imperial College London. So what we'll be looking at in this talk is the fundamental building block of modern communication system, which is the multi-antenna broadcast channels. And this is an illustration of this multi-antenna broadcast channel. We have a base station equipped with NT transmit antenna that wants to serve K users, in this case, K single antenna users. We have H1 to HK that represents the vector channels, so the channel state information of those K users. We assume that the, we have perfect channel state information at the receiver, so perfect CSIR, and the base station only obtains estimates of those channel state information. So we have, in general, imperfect channel state information with the transmitter, so imperfect CSIT. Um, and this is denoted by those estimates H1 hat all the way to HK hat. So the conventional approach or conventional architecture for this kind of multi-antenna broadcast channels that is used in 4G and 5G is to rely on multi-user linear precoding. So we schedule K users and we encode the K messages of those K users into K independent stream S1 to SK. So from K messages, we essentially create K independent streams. We then linearly precode those K streams and they are transmitted over the NT transmit antennas and over the air and are received by the K users. Now each user's decode is intended uh, stream by treating any residual interference from the other streams as nodes. This is a simple architecture that can incur some significant loss if the multi-user interference is not within the noise level. So let's step back a little bit here and let's try to understand what the community has done in the past 20 years. What we have done in the past 20 years essentially is summarized through this chart here. What we have tried to do is first um, understand the information theoretic fundamental limit of a multi-antenna broadcast channels and try to derive those fundamental limits, for instance, in terms of capacity region, identify the communication schemes that identify those uh, performance limits, which is known as dirty paper coding, and then realize that dirty paper coding is too complicated to implement. And so signal processing techniques like precoder optimization have been used to design simpler strategies based on linear precoding. And at the end, we realized that actually we don't have perfect channel state information at the transmitter. We only work with imperfect channel state information at the transmitter in realistic systems. And so we end up doing some form of robust optimization in order to make the system robust to imperfect CSIT. The system model that we end up uh, playing with is as follows. X, the transmit signal vector, is equal to a sum over the K users of the precoded streams of each user. So SK is the stream of user K multiplied by the precoder of user K. This is our conventional system model, but we have to keep in mind that this system model was motivated by perfect CSIT from the beginning. We incorporate imperfect CSIT only at the end when we try to design the robust precoders. Now, what we're going to try to do here in this um, novel approach is to bring imperfect CSIT not at the, as the last step, but as a first step. So we're actually looking at the information theoretic um, channels of a multi-antenna broadcast channels with imperfect CSIT. 
the community has tried to identify what are the fundamental limits of uh, multi-antenna broadcasts within perfect CSIT. Unfortunately, those limits are currently still unknown. So for instance, the capacity region when we have in perfect CSIT is unknown. But what is known are some approximation of the capacity, for instance, in terms of degrees of freedom. So the number of interference uh, free streams that can be transmitted in the network. And so we can now understand those fundamental limits in terms of DOF and um, identify the communication strategies that achieve this fundamental DOF uh, limit. And the communication strategies that achieve this is based on rate splitting. And once we have a rate splitting framework, then we can actually design leveraging signal processing techniques and precoder optimization to optimize the rate splitting. Now the system model that we end up with when we start with imperfect CSIT from the beginning is uh, right as follows. We have a transmit signal vector that is given by the sum of two terms. The first term here is reminiscent of what we had in the conventional approach, but additionally we have an additional stream here that is transmitted denoted by SC. Now this new approach in contrast to the conventional approach is now optimal in a degrees of freedom sense when we have uh, a multi-antenna broadcast with imperfect CSIT. Now let's look at the bigger picture. Um, and what we can notice is actually that imperfect CSIT can be viewed as a more general problem of uh, perfect CSIT. And this is actually denoted by those two bubbles here. If any errors on the uh, imperfect CSIT is set to zero, the system model essentially boils down to perfect CSIT. So because imperfect CSIT is a marginal problem, it makes sense that we expect that the communication strategies to cope with imperfect CSITs should be uh, a more general class of communication strategies. And the one we know that have been designed for perfect CSIT should be actually a subset of those strategies. And this is what we're going to see with uh, rate splitting. Rate splitting will be written as something like this, where we have this uh, conventional part here, and we have these additional streams there. And we will see two different architecture that actually work based on this principle. The first one is dirty paper coding rate splitting, and the second one is linearly pre-coded rate splitting. And this is in contrast with the uh, classical strategy that do not rely on rate splitting, where that are obtained essentially by turning off this uh, stream SC. So let's look at this first architecture, linearly pre-coded rate splitting. We still start with scheduling K users, and instead of encoding those K messages into K streams, what we do is we first split each of those messages into two parts. We split each message WK into a common part and a private part. And so WK is split into WCK and WPK. And we do the same for W1 and WK. We then combine those common parts into a common message WC, and we encode WC into a common stream SC. WP1 to WPK are in, uh, independently encoded into a private stream S1 to SK. So we go from K messages, and from those K messages, we actually create K plus one streams. So we have one more streams compared to the uh, previous architecture, the conventional multi-user linear precoding. Now, what do we do at the receiver after uh, linear, pre linear precoding? What we do at the receiver, each receiver, so receiver K, for instance, will first decode its, the common stream, SC, retrieve the common message from this common stream, from this common message, we'll actually retrieve the part that is intended to himself. So WCK is retrieved from WC. And 
User K will then re-encode WC and perform SIC in order to retrieve the, its private stream, SK, and from SK will decode it in, in order to retrieve the intended uh, private part of its message. So once he has retrieved the common part and the private part, he will recombine those two into the message WK hat, and hopefully WK hat will be the same as WK, right? So all users here perform the same operation. What they do is that first decode the common stream SC and then decode their private stream SK. And so what we note is that the information to a given user is not transmitted through a single stream SK, but is split. Part of it is transmitted through this common stream. Part of it is transmitted through the private streams. And so the rate of user K has been split because the rate of user K is given by the rate of its private stream plus part of the rate of the common stream that carries the uh, part of the message that is intended to user K. Now the key is to adjust the power located to the common stream SC such that any multi-user interference among the private streams is within the noise level. Another architecture is dirty paper coded rate splitting, which uh, looks like the previous one with the difference is that now the private uh, part here are encoded into private streams using dirty paper coding instead of simply encoding them into um, private streams and simply linearly precode them. So there is a dirty paper encoding uh, step here. The remaining step um, are the same. Now let's look at the performance that we can achieve with this kind of architecture and let's start with degrees of freedom. So we have an imperfect CSIT model that says that our CSI for user K is equal to an estimate that is known at the transmitter plus some CSI error. And this CSI error, the power of this CSI error is modeled as something like this. It says that the power scales with P, P being the SNR, um, with an exponent alpha that is the CSIT quality. And so the alpha is a quantity that is positive. And so as P increase, as the SNR increase, essentially the CSIT error decreases and it decreases faster as alpha uh, is large. And so this alpha can be interpreted um, as the number of feedback bits, for instance. And so alpha can be taken between zero and infinity. If alpha is equal to zero, what it means is that this CSIT error here is a constant. And so it can be interpreted in terms of feedback bits as if we have a fixed number of feedback bits, whatever the SNR. If alpha is infinity, essentially this is equivalent to having an infinite number of feedback bits and so having perfect channel state information in the transmitter. Now what we can show is that from a degrees of freedom perspective, it's sufficient to limit alpha between zero and one. And so alpha equal to one can be shown to be equivalent to perfect CSIT from a degrees of freedom perspective. Now, what are the DOF, and then I would say the sum DOF that um, no rate splitting, so any technique that does not rely on rate splitting, like multi-user linear precoding, and what are the DOF that rate splitting can achieve? Now, no rate splitting can achieve a DOF of K alpha, assuming the number of transmit antenna is larger than the number of users. So if alpha is equal to one, which is from a DOF, again, is equivalent to perfect CSIT, it means that we can transmit a DOF of K. We can transmit K interference free streams, which is the optimal DOF when we have perfect CSIT. 
Unfortunately, this DOF, K alpha, when alpha is smaller than one, is suboptimal um, in the imperfect CSLT setting. On the other hand, rate splitting achieves a, a sum DOF of K alpha plus an additional term here, one minus alpha. And if we take alpha equal to one, we see that clearly these terms disappear here and we end up with just k. So we end up with a DOF of k, which is the same as what we had here, saying that essentially rate splitting achieved the same DOF as no rate splitting when we have perfect CSIT. On the other hand, if alpha is smaller than one and we have in perfect CSIT, this sum DOF is actually the, the information theoretic optimal sum DOF. So we cannot get any better than that. Interestingly, rate splitting um, is optimal not only in terms of some DOF, but in terms of the entire degrees of freedom region when we have multi antenna broadcast channel. So, this um, DOF can be uh, interpreted in a very nice way. We have the sum here of 1 minus alpha plus k alpha, and this can be interpreted as the sum or the superposition of two sub networks. So we have our MISO broadcast channels can be decomposed as the superposition of two sub-networks. A first sub-network here that has a perfect CSIT and a sub-network here that has no CSIT. The bottom sub-network is allocated a power level alpha and the top sub-network is allocated a power level one minus alpha. And so this can be shown to achieve a DOF of K because we have the ability to transmit now K interference free streams in this sub network with perfect CSIT, but it's scaled by alpha because we only use alpha, a fraction alpha of the power level. On the other hand, the top sub networks achieve a DOF of one minus alpha because of the presence of the no CSIT and the allocation of a power level one minus alpha. And so what rate splitting does is essentially it split the message such that the data can be loaded onto those two sub networks uh, in the most efficient way. So DOF um, enhancement is translate in terms of rate enhancement. And this is what we can see from here. We have in blue, the conventional approach of multi-user linear precoding, and we have in red the rate splitting based uh, strategies. And we see that the slope when we have two transmit antennas, two users, is increased uh, significantly here with alpha equal to 0 0.5. So instead of having a slope of one here with two users, now we have a slope of 1.5. So we have a 50% increase in terms of slope. Similarly here with four users, four transmit antennas, again, we have um, in the increase of the slope. So we have a slope increase and we can say because of the optimality of rate splitting in terms of uh, DOF, we can say that actually we cannot reach any, uh, any better DOF or any uh, better slope than, than that. Now the DOF enhancement leads to a rate enhancement, not in terms of only in terms of some rate, but in terms of entire uh, rate region. So this is an example here where we have two transmit antennas and two users. We have imperfect CSIT with parameter alpha equal to 0 0.6. And we're looking at here at five different strategies. The yellow one is um, what is nowadays called non-orthogonal multiple access. So it's a multi-antenna version of non-orthogonal uh, multiple access. So it's a MISO-NOMA uh, scheme. Um, the green one is MULP. This is the conventional strategy that is used in uh, 4G and 5G, but fully optimized. We have the blue one is dirty paper coding. So the, 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 the strategy that is optimal, information theoretic optimal when we have perfect CSIT, but here used in the imperfect CSIT setting. And we see here in red and purple, we have two rate splitting strategies. The red one is linearly precoded rate splitting and the purple one is the dirty paper coded rate splitting. And we note that actually both array schemes outperform any conventional non-rate splitting schemes. So it outperforms 
uh, multi-user linear precoding, or also called uh, space division multiplexing or multi-user MIMO. It outperforms NORMA, and it even outperforms dirty pair precoding, despite the fact that linearly precoded respecting has a much lower complexity than, than DPC. The best scheme so far here we see is the combination of rate splitting and dirty paper coding into this DPCRS that uh, slightly outperform linearly precoded rate splitting. Now, this was in terms of rate region. We can look at other metrics, for instance, uh, max mean fairness. So, here what we try to do is to maximize the minimum rate among all the users. So, this is a very fair metric. Um, and what we note here is that the rate versus SNR of rate splitting in red versus non-rate splitting, multi-user linear precoding, the gain is quite significant. We have the non-rate splitting technique set rate due to the imperfect CSIT. And so at some point, essentially, the no-rate splitting techniques end up um, saturating be because of the uh, interference that is in the network due to the imperfect CSIT. On the other hand, rate splitting achieves a maximum rate that is non-vanishing. It keeps increasing with the SNR because it can handle the uh, multi-user interference that is created by the imperfect CSIT in a more uh, robust manner. Now, I have mentioned uh, NOMA, and we have seen that rate splitting relies on successive interference cancellation. So this um, connects a little bit to this uh, NOMA literature. What we can show is that rate splitting is actually a building block of uh, more general uh, uh, multiple access schemes that is called rate splitting multiple access. And we can show that Space division multiple access, also that, that relies on multi-user linear precoding, orthogonal multiple access, non-orthogonal multiple access, and multicasting strategies are all subset of a more general class of multiple access schemes that is called rate splitting multiple access. And so because the scheme is more general, this uh, leads to a more general optimization framework and so to performance enhancement. And so why is this rate splitting multiple access more general and more flexible? Is because it breached two extremes. One extreme is SDMA, where any residual interference is treated as noise. And the other extreme is non-orthogonal multiple access, where a given user is forced to decode or to fully decode the message of other users. So NOMA works in, uh, from an interference management perspective, actually tries to fully decode interference. And what rate splitting multiple access does, it tries to partially decode interference and partially treat interference as noise and therefore bridge space division multiple access and non orthogonal multiple access. Um, by adjusting how much power is allocated to the common stream and how much power is allocated to the private streams. So let's try to show this, how SDMA and NOMA are a subset of RSMA. Here we're looking at a two user scenarios, uh, the toy example to really explain how it works. We have, we scale two users, we have two messages to transmit, use message W1 intended to user one, W2 internet to user two. And with rate splitting, what we do is that we split those two messages into two parts, a common part WC1 and a private part WP1. And we do the same for W2. We take those two common parts, we encode them, we, we uh, combine them into a common uh, message. And then from those three messages here, we actually encode them into three different streams, SC, which is a common stream that is decoded by both users, and S1 and S2 are the private streams that are decoded respectively by user 1 and user 2. So receiver 1 will decode the common stream, from the common stream will retrieve the common message, from the common message will retrieve the part of the common message that is intended to user 1, 
perform SIC, retrieve the private part, and then recombine the two into the original message W. So where is SDMA or multi-user linear precoding here? Well, SDMA is simply obtained by turning off this common stream. So we allocate no power to SC. And so the message W1 is encoded directly into the stream S1. W2 is encoded directly into the stream S2. And what we end up with is a system model P1S1 plus P2S2. We don't have PC multiplied by SC as we have in USPT. Where is NOMA? NOMA is obtained by forcing one user to fully decode the message of the other user. So let's assume user one is the message that fully decodes the, the, is the user that fully decodes the message of user two. And so to do this, what we can do is that we can turn off the private stream of user two. We can encode W1 into S1, and we can encode W2 into the common stream SC. So by encoding W2 into the common stream SC, both users will now decode W2. This is exactly what we do in, in NOMA. The message of the weakest user is decoded by both users. So the message of user two is decoded by both users by being encoded into the common streams. And so what we end up with is a system model X that is equal to PCSC plus P1S1, W1 has been encoded into the stream S1, and W2 intended to use a 2 has been encoded into the common stream SC. And so we see that in NOMA we also have a common stream, even though it's not usually denoted like this in the literature. And this common stream here carries entirely the message of the weakest user, W2. Okay, so when we compare rate splitting SDMA and NOMA, the main difference is actually how we map messages to streams. And those, this simple table here explains this. In SDMA, we map W1 directly into S1, W2 into S2. We don't transmit anything into the common stream. In NOMA, we map W1 into a private stream S1, W2 into a common stream SC. In OMA, we transmit only one user at a time. In multicasting, we transmit both messages into the common stream so that both users decode the common stream. And in rate splitting, we split all those message W1 and W2 into private part that are encoded into S1, S2, and common part that they uh, encoded into SC. And so this red part here, so the part that is encoded into SC, is actually decoded by both users. The part encoded into S1 and S2 are decoded by the intended users and treated as noise by the other users. And so by adjusting the split of those messages and the power we allocate to the common stream versus the private streams, we that can actually bridge any of those four schemes and we can achieve better performance because the framework is essentially more general. So rate splitting here in these two user case is actually a superset of SDMA, OMA, NOMA, and Multicast. And this superset means that we have performance enhancement. So what we analyze here is how rate splitting boils down to existing schemes as a function of two parameters. The first parameter is the I would say the correlation between the two channel direction and the second parameter is the channel strength. So this correlation, what it tells us, rho, as rho increases, as rho gets closer to one, essentially it means that the two channels, directions, getting more orthogonal to each other. If rho is small, it means that the two channels, directions, actually getting more aligned with each other. And what we note is that uh, by looking at the weighted sum rate, so uh, uh, we look at the rate of user one and the rate of user two, and we adjust, we put some weight in front of each other to try to actually account for some form of fairness among the two users. If we put some more weights to user one than to user two, what we note is that um, we actually achieve SDMA in this region when we have actually the two channels actually close to being orthogonal to each other and have a very small channel strength disparity among themselves. We achieve uh, 
uh, we perform a split of the messages when we are in this region here. And if we have a chance strength that actually is uh, sufficiently large, essentially rate splitting boils down to doing OMA. We don't perform any NOMA here. Rate splitting never boils down to NOMA in this configuration when user one is uh, received a higher weight than user two. So when the strong user receive a higher weight than the weak user. When the weights are the same, what we see is that the rate splitting boils down to SDMA again in this region here, when we have sufficiently, uh, the, the two channel uh, direction are sufficiently orthogonal with each other, and OMA in this region here, when we have a large disparity of channel strength. And if we allocate a larger weight to the weakest user, then we start seeing that rate splitting boils down to NOMA in some part of the region here, when we have a small, uh, when the, the small row, so when the channels actually more closer to, to, to being aligned, and then we have a large disparity of channel strength. We have in this yellow region, we perform weight splitting, really when we really split the messages, or mind this small region and no margin. And so what we show here is that because rate splitting is general, it can really boils down to sub-strategies as OMA, SDMA, NOMA, and in some region is actually, is not any of those three strategies, is actually performs rate splitting itself. So it has to split the messages. Now the benefit of rate splitting is obviously rate enhancement. And this is a very clear uh, example here where we have a 10 user setup with two transmit antennas, and we assume a perfect CSIT. So we show that actually rate splitting can even achieve performance gain in the imperfect CSIT setting. We have a weighted sum rate and we have SNR. And we have quality of service constraint here for those 10 users. And what we show is that in green, we have multi-user linear precoding. In yellow, we have uh, no non-optical multiple access. And in, yellow, in pink, we have one layer rate splitting. So one layer rate splitting here, what it does, it transmits um, 10 private streams plus one common stream. So we essentially, we transmit 11 streams. And uh, what we note is that we achieve a rate and a DOF that is significantly larger than what we can achieve with uh, multi-user linear precoding and NOMA. And we have to keep in mind that actually here, we actually achieve this by using only one layer of successive interference cancellation in contrast with NOMA that has to deal with 10 users and therefore has to actually implement nine layers of SIC. So we have a significant performance gain and at the same time we have a significant um, complexity reductions at the receiver because we only use one SIC instead of nine SIC. So because rate splitting is, is a general framework that actually does not force to uh, treat interference as noise or fully decode interference, but actually bridges those two extremes by partially decoding interference and partially treating interference as noise. We achieve higher rate, higher quality of service, a higher robustness when we have imperfect CSIT, and we even achieve a lower complexity than other non optical schemes as no. Now rate splitting can have lots of different applications. And the first one is obviously in the interference channels, and this comes from the seminal work of Carlyle and Han and Kobayashi that has introduced the idea of rate splitting when it comes to this uh, two-user size or interference channels. In the past few years, the idea of rate splitting has shown to be extremely beneficial when we have multi-antenna setting, and especially in the multi-antenna broadcast channels. So when we have multi-antenna broadcast channels with partial CSIT, when we have multi-antenna in multi-cell network with partial CSIT, when we have massive MIMO with partial CSIT, when we have millimeter wave systems, when we have uh, wireless information power transfer, when we do coordinated multi-point joint transmission like in CRAN, when we transmit uh, uh, mixed services. So we have unicast and multicast uh, message that needs to be transmitted uh, simultaneously or jointly 
when we have multi-antenna, multi-group, multi-casting, for instance, in satellite communication, when we have caching, when we have very overloaded systems, like in uh, massive access, there are many, many scenarios for which rate splitting is beneficial because rate splitting is a core underpinning communication theoretic strategies that can very um, smartly and very uh, flexibly uh, manage interference in wireless networks. So in conclusion, what we have observed is that rate splitting partially decode interference and partially treat interference as noise in contrast with multi-user linear precoding that tries to fully treat interference as noise and normal that tries to fully decode interference. It can be viewed as a robust interference management strategy, robust to any form of imperfect knowledge of the chance that we have the transmitter. It can be seen as a flexible non-orthogonal transmission strategy because the common stream is superimposed on the private streams and SIC is used at the receiver. So it's a form of non-orthogonal transmission strategy and it's very flexible because we adjust how the data are loaded onto the common stream versus the private stream. And it can be viewed as a powerful enabler of a unified multiple access uh, where classical multiple access as SDMA, NOMA, OMA are just sub strategies of uh, rate splitting multiple access. And this leads to fundamental change to physical layer and multiple, ac uh, multiple access, uh, uh, medium access uh, layers. So we see performance benefit in terms of spectral and energy efficiency, uh, quality of service and fairness enhancement, robust uh, to imperfect CSIT, uh, reduction in terms of feedback overhead, robust to hardware impairments, for instance, phase noise. It can cope with any user distribution, so whether the users have actually a disparity of channel directions or channel strength, and any user uh, network load, whether the system is underloaded or overloaded, so we have more users than the number of antennas, or we have more antennas than the number of users. Uh, and it can lead to a complexity reductions compared to NOMA, because as we have seen before, we can rely only on one SIC and get significant performance enhancement simply because we actually uh, evolve in a much, uh, much more flexible form of non-orthogonal transmission uh, strategy. And so it's a goldmine of research problem for academia and industry. Um, Rifling plays a fundamental role in identifying the fundamental limits of uh, wireless networks. It plays a big role in multi-user, multi-cell, multi-antenna networks as a robust interference management strategies, as a unified multiple access framework in terms of general physical layer design. There are lots of work to do coding and modulation for the common stream and the private streams, cross-layer design, optimization, performance analysis, and a lot of um, uh, issues related to implementation and standardization because the presence of the common private streams leads to standardization issues. And so these techniques can have applications in many different settings that are actually very relevant in modern communication systems, in physical layer security, in caching, in multi-user multi-antennas, in massive MIMO, in wireless information transmission, in cooperative transmissions where actually the users can actually be relaying the, the common stream to further help the, the performance in massive MIMO, relay, cognitive radio, uh, massive uh, IoT or massive access, uh, satellite networks as well to manage interference in multi-beam satellite networks, so for terrestrial and non-terrestrial systems and so on. So how can we actually see uh, RS uh, coming into the pictures in beyond 5G and 6G. Well, if we look at uh, what 5G has done, they have looked at lots of different study items and work items. MUST or NOMA was one of the uh, downlink study items. Multi-user MIMO, COMP, massive MIMO has been extensively studied in um, 5G. Network assisted interference coordination. And then mixed services, broadcast, multicast, and unicast. And all those different study items are actually building blocks 
for rate splitting. Rate splitting as a unified strategy can actually tackle those four different problems at, at, at once. And so rate splitting can actually leverage those uh, study item and work item performed in 5G. But there is one missing piece to really benefit from the flexibility of rate splitting is the message split at the transmitter. And so this would need to be standardized in order to really explore the full potential of rate splitting. And so rate splitting can have application, uh, numerous application in 6G, in enhanced EMBB, in enhanced uh, ultra uh, uh, reliability and low latency communication, in enhanced machine type communication, and can have application in new services into joint sensing and radar and communication when we want to manage the interference between radar or sensing and communication more uh, efficiently in wireless information and power transfer, in integrated cellular and satellite networks, and so on. So I attach here uh, several reference, very relevant reference um, covering the state of the arts on rate splitting in the past few years, so especially multi antenna rate splitting. Um, feel free to look at this, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me uh, by email. I will be very happy to either collaborate or answer your uh, questions. Thank you for your attendance.